Hi guys, it's Harold Spud again. It's time we looked at some new stuff, I think. So I'm going to move on from Raspberry Pi and look at a new thing, which is called ESP32. And this is an ESP32 here. It's a little tiny little thing, much more compact, and it's more of a microcontroller than an actual full computer system with an operating system. So this is really nice, and it's really good, and we're going to use it to make the same things we made before, which is going to be CCTV and cameras and that sort of thing. Um, we'll start off really easy, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share my screen with you and show you what we can do. That's on the left, I've got the uh, programming, and we're using the Arduino interface. And if you use the Arduino interface, uh, the IDE, you can program in the Arduino language, which is more or less uh, C++, which is really nice. It's a nice language. And uh, you need to tell it that you've actually got um, an ESP32 rather than Arduino. And uh, in this way, you can actually compile things um, and run them. So the first program I've got up here is just a simple one to flash four LEDs. We can have a look at the actual ESP32. It's um, got a processor, it's got memory, it's got RAM, it's got some little buttons on here, it's got an onboard LED, blue one, it's got a red LED that tells you it's um, loading up, and lots of pins. Uh, these are the same as uh, similar to GPIO on a Raspberry Pi. So we can do that, and we can flash four LEDs um, using the ESP32. So um, here's a little video of the actual thing. Uh, flashing the four LEDs and it's this program here which is running. Okay guys, so we've got an ESP32 working. We can flash four LEDs using the GPIOs just by setting them to high and low. Um, now, the next thing is, well, we, we should get a camera and maybe store stuff on an SD card and maybe let it talk by Wi-Fi if we're feeling really good. Um, ooh, but how are we gonna do that? Well, there's an, you'd think there would be an easy way to do that which would be to use this really nice device here. Oh, actually, no, not this one, but this one here. Um, the top one is the ESP32. It's just a dev kit. It's a standard one that you'd use for messing around with. Really nice, got all the GPIOs and everything. The one below is the ESP32-CAM, and it's a camera module with an ESP32. And if you look really closely, it's got an SD card slot as well. Brilliant. So it's got a camera built in. It talks to the camera, it talks to the SD card, it's got Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or both, in fact it has got both. Um, so you can actually make a nice little web server out of this and it's a nice little spy camera. And it has a very high powered LED, white LED there, which you can turn on and off. Brilliant. We think that'd be really good for doing what we're doing, which is a little animal spy camera thing, nighttime camera. But alas, no, not quite. Um, this looks like it does the job, but and it looks like it's got lots of GPIOs here to connect your um, circuitry to power up the nighttime infrared LEDs and all that, and the motion sensor. But no, um, we have a problem. And our problem is this, basically. Let's just zoom out a bit here and refocus. Um, my first thought on here was to let's find some GPIOs we can use for the sensor and for turning off the LEDs, or turning on and off the infrared LEDs. So I've mapped out the actual ESP32, what the pins do and everything. You've got a few pins here. GPIO 4, 2, 14, 15, 13, 12, ground, power. You've got, mm, that's a serial interface there, that's 3.5. There's not much else here. GPIO 16, that looks promising as well. So you think there's enough there, but there's not. Um, there's a problem. The GPIO is listed out here are just about all used up and it makes it very difficult to run the project I want to run. Um, GPIO 1234 are used up with uh, transmit receive, SD card, 
um, the camera, GPIO5, pin D, D0, SPI flash, if you want to flash um, the program onto the card, GPIOs 5 to 11 are already used up. Um, these ones are used up for serial bus. Um, GPIO 18 to 25 used up by the camera. These ones can only be inputs, they can't be outputs. So there really isn't enough um, GPIOs. There are not enough GPIOs to use for our little project. So I'm going to write this off. Goodbye. There we go. And we're back to this thing again here. Now, there's a problem with this here um, in that, well, we haven't got the camera module, have we? And we haven't got, ooh, um, even if we have, we probably haven't got enough GPIOs for it. So we'll have a think about what we're going to do um, with this. In fact, there's a few things uh, that we can do. First of all, we can get ourselves a nice little camera module. Let's have a look. Let's have a zoom in here. Um, we're going to use a GPIO, the SP32, sorry, whoops. We're going to use a camera with all these little pins and everything. We can just pin it directly to where we want it to be. We're going to use an SD card um, that will talk to our ESP32. It's got all of the um, bus connections there. Hopefully we can connect it all in. Not done it yet, but you know it will do. We've got to live in hope, haven't we? We'll have a little... Um, perhaps a little um, infrared LED to go with it as well, but it'll sensor we stole that off the other camera thing. Um, and we could even, if we're feeling really good, we could have um, an OLED display to tell us whether we've got any pictures or not. That would be helpful as well. That'd be nice. And we're also going to want um, our PIR sensor in there as well. Um, and in fact, maybe instead of this one, we'll use um, a, oops, we'll use um, a 940 nanometer far infrared LED. So yeah, that's great, but we need some more GPIOs. And one way to do it is to use this thing here. And this thing here is um, an MCP 23017, um, and it's a port extender, and it allows you to talk on the serial bus, the I2C bus, um, and then have lots and lots and lots of different GPIOs that you can use in addition to the ones you've got there. So you're on the, this side, let's just turn it upside down if you can see what's there. Um, I've got BCC power and ground. SCL is the clock signal. Um, SDA is the data signal. So this is a data bus, the I2C data bus. There's a reset pin there. I've no idea what those are. And up here, I've got all of the outputs. And this 16, this will do 16 different um, GPIO pins. So that's brilliant. We can use that. Um, in actual fact, what we're going to do is we're going to use, well, to start with, because I didn't have that thing at the time, I'm going to use uh, this thing here, which is the just the integrated circuit version of the MCP um, 23 out of 17, which you can just see there. And I'm going to wire directly to it, um, and I'm going to make four LEDs flash. So let's see how we go with that. Okay, here we go. Um, what we're going to do is, let me just share my screen with you first of all. I'm going to share uh, the camera again here. There's my little setup there. Um, this wire I've got here is connected to the PC and it's got five volts on it and it will actually just run there and then as soon as I power it up. So this now is flashing the four LEDs, not quite, more or less in order. The white one's a bit bright. And it also flashes the onboard blue LED. This is the blue one here. So you might ask me, well, how do you get the code into the ESP32? Which is uh, an interesting thing in itself. So let me just um, stop this share here and we will share the whole screen with you. And um, there's my ESP32 happily working away here. And here, is my IDE. Now at the moment the IDE, let's go back here, is sat doing nothing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to do um, upload which means it's going to compile the sketch and then upload it. So at the moment it's compiling the sketch. You see here it says compiling sketch and it'll have a think about it. Uh, in the meantime the, the device is still powered so it's still going to go. 
there we go, compile and sketch. In a minute, it's going to say, I want to talk to the ESP32. And it's not going to be able to until I press the little button down here. So I will press that button when the time comes, and then it will allow it to flash the device. And the code is stay, it's, uh, recorded on there for a while. So at the moment, we're still compiling. Um, so we compile it into machine code. And when we're ready, um, along this USB cable we've got here, it will send the code in binary onto the device and flash it on there. Now it says connecting. I'm going to press the button. And then it will say, there we go. You can let go now once it's running and it's now writing in binary and then the code will run. Now this bit device has already flashed before. So there we go. Uh, we've written some code, we've flashed the device and it works really nicely and flashes some LEDs. So first project done. Results.